Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, April 30th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last few days we have been seeing sort of a second wave of attacks that appear to target a vulnerability in D-Link NAS devices. There are really sort of uh, two vulnerabilities at play here. The more severe one is a simple authentication bypass. These devices uh, use a user message bus without password. So a user, an attacker, can just simply authenticate with user equals message bus, leaving the password empty. The original proof of concept for this vulnerability was released about a month ago by a GitHub user who goes by the name of Network Security Fish, and it used a specific CGI to actually then execute arbitrary commands, and that's NAS underscore sharing dot CGI. And that's sort of a little bit the second vulnerability here that in order to then execute arbitrary commands uh, using this uh, easy to access user, you need to have a URL like NAS underscore sharing that allows you to actually just send commands to the device. Shortly after the vulnerability was announced, uh, we did see sort of a wave of attacks that basically just exactly used the proof of concept exploit. What we started seeing then mid-month and in the last few days, it really has sort of uh, spiking is uh, the use of another uh, CGI script, Oros uh, P-U-C-O-C.C-G-I, no real idea how to pronounce it. it. Appears to be possibly a Turkish word, but it's nothing that I sort of really found documented anywhere. The URL parameters that are being used look exactly the, si the same as we see used against NAS underscore sharing. However, it's possible that uh, this other script actually is more something like a later introduced backdoor, maybe using the first vulnerability and is now taking advantage of that same authentication bypass in order to execute code. If anybody has any more details, maybe you own one of these affected dealing NAS devices, let me know if the second URL actually exists on devices or is something that may have been introduced later. The commands we do see executed are simple like uh, uname and echo commands in order to just check if a specific uh, device is vulnerable. And sadly, if you do own an affected device, there's a good chance that there won't be a patch available because the affected devices are end of life and dealing basically suggests as a part of its uh, advisory regarding this vulnerability to just replace uh, the devices. And Infoplox uh, published a blog post with some interesting uh, DNS abuse uh, that they have been observing for a few years now that appears to be originated by the Great Chinese Firewall. This behavior reminds me a little bit of something that sometimes has been referred to as the Red Iron Cannon, where the Great Chinese Firewall is not just blocking uh, requests or responses, but also actively altering the content of responses. In this particular case, it appears to be the recursive resolution of MX records, so mail server records. Now, usually some of this activity has uh, focused on A records, so IPv4 addresses, and uh, many years ago we have observed that, for example, against the Internet Storm Center website, where Pirate Bay all of a sudden resolved to our IP address inside China. This is different activity. It affects queries coming from outside China into China, passing the uh, Great Firewall, and then the responses going back are apparently being altered. The exact purpose isn't quite clear yet. It could just be a denial of service attack, uh, like uh, that's sort of what uh, we observed back in the day with A records. Could also, of course, be some kind of attempt to do a machine in the middle attack by returning these invalid IP addresses. Interesting blog post by Infoblox here with more details in the show notes. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, I had one of our Sansa TDU students, Daniel Masella, talk about some of the risks in 
automotive head units. And one of the things that uh, Daniel pointed out is that if you are using the automotive head unit in order to link it to your Google account, then well, data can be synced to the automotive head unit and any malware introduced could then have access to any data that is associated with your Google account, like for example, Gmail. Well, uh, this particular issue is not unique to automotive head units. Android, the operating system, of course, uh, shows up in many different places, like, for example, Android TV and Cameron Cray, a YouTuber, now did document this problem specifically with Android TV. If you're logging into your Google account with your Android TV, shouldn't really be a big surprise. Well, the Android TV does have access uh, to your Google account. Apparently, Google is now working on a fix for this issue. There is an article by 404 Media. Sadly, it appears to be behind a paywall that has some statements uh, according uh, to the, this fix. But uh, up to now, it has sort of widely ignored this uh, problem. Well, and this is it for today. Remember, we do have Sans Fire coming up in July. I'll be uh, teaching uh, the Defending Web Application class. We have a couple of special events planned just for people who are attending in person. If you're interested, uh, check uh, below the show notes. I usually have links uh, to future classes I'm teaching, and I believe uh, the Sans Fire class is already showing up there. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.